I'm here with Dr. Alison Trump in at the AACR and CI ERTC meeting. Today we've heard the results of Recetapop, an investigation on oral first-in-class P53 reactivator specific to the DP53Y20C mutation. Today, uh, Dr. Alison Shum has presented the Pinnacle Phase II study. Really, uh, this is exciting. TP53 is one of the most frequently mutated genes in cancer, uh, with the um, TP53Y20C mutation really causing a loss of the tumor suppression function, but it also creates a unique structural pocket that has been uh, used for targeted therapy. And the setup of selectively binds uh, to this pocket and it establishes the wild type uh, conformation, therefore restoring 53 function. Please, um, Dr. Schramm, can you really summarize the natural history and the prognostic impact of the TPY20C mutation from the real world data analysis presented at the triple meeting? Yes, um, absolutely. So um, in a real world study, we looked at patients who have P53Y220C mutations and compared them to patients without the Y220C alteration. And what we observed is that these patients have a poor prognosis with a worse uh, real-world overall survival as compared to the patients without this alteration. This really ha highlights the unmet medical need for patients with this alteration and uh, adds to the growing body of data on clinical characteristics and outcomes in patients with P53 alterations. Rosetta Popped and other P53 reactivators potentially offer um, a novel and very exciting therapeutic opportunity for patients with P53 alterations. Thank you, Alison. And uh, could you please walk us through the Pinnacle Phase two clinical trial, its design, key efficacy, and across all cohorts, but particularly in the ovarian cancer cohort? The Pinnacle Phase two trial was a pivotal phase two global study for patients with advanced or metastatic solid tumors with P53Y220C alterations. And the, uh, the trial included five cohorts, an ovarian cancer cohort, other select cohorts in different solid tumor types, and a basket cohort. The co-primary endpoints were overall response rate in the, the ovarian cohort and then across all cohorts. I presented data on the investigator assessed overall response rates today. Um, the overall response rate for patients with in, across all cohorts um, was 34%, and that's including 103 patients who are efficacy available, uh, valuable. These were generally uh, heavily pretreated patients. Um, the responses were fast. The median time to response was 1.3 months and durable. The duration, median duration of response was 7.6 6 months. In the ovarian cancer population, uh, of the 48 patients who were efficacy available, valuable, the overall response rate was 46%. And again, these responses were very quick. Uh, the median time to response was 1.3 months, and the median duration of response was eight months. Uh, this is it, particularly exciting in ovarian cancer, where um, this response rate and durability is significantly higher than our current benchmarks. For example, in the endometrial cancer cohort, it was, there was a small cohort, five patients, but the overall response rate was 60% in this cohort, again, demonstrating um, proof of concept and efficacy for P53 re reactivation across solid tumors. Thank you. And, and what were the key safety findings and how manageable were the treatment-related adverse events? Yeah, so Rosetta Popped was very well tolerated. The majority of adverse events were grade one or grade two. Most common treatment-related adverse events were nausea, um, fatigue, creatinine increase in ALT elevation, these were generally manageable, transient uh, alterations. Only 4% of patients discontinued treatment due to a treatment-related adverse event. And notably, patients were administered a drug with food, and this substantially improved the tolerability as compared to the phase one trial, where patients, uh, some received rosetapopt in the fasting state. Specifically, the gastrointestinal toxicities were, were much uh, fewer and more manageable in the phase two trial where Rosetapop really was very well tolerated. Thank you very much, Alison. So how do you see this data fitting into the clinical paradigm for oncology drugs? Really, Rosetapop is, um, for the first time, single agent activity you know, in, a, in what has been considered an undruggable target. So uh, it is uh, really exciting. It, it does seem to have activity across different tumor types, but the activity in, in ovarian cancer seems uh, uh, particularly uh, relevant. Uh, and it really highlights the importance of 
targeting specific TP53 mutations as a new precision uh, medicine strategy. So uh, it will be really important to identify these patients uh, in order to fully evaluate the potential. How do you think the best way to identify these patients is? Well, um, TP53 uh, mutations uh, are, are prevalent, but it's true that the specific TP53Y220C mutation uh, accounts for has a prevalence of around uh, 1% of the patients, or, although it can be as enriched as, as you mentioned in the, in the high-grade serious ovarian cancer, where it can be from 3 uh, to 5%. But, but these are the challenges of, of finding these rare patient populations, and, and we've been, we're come used to it uh, when we're talking about, about precision medicine. I think it would be uh, relevant uh, to have and do upfront uh, gene uh, testing in broad patient population beyond those that are uh, perhaps more frequently uh, profiled. It would be important to preferentially do tissue um, uh, given uh, this specific mutation, but if liquid biopsy is the only test available, it, it would be important to have um, uh, a, a test that really can exclude uh, cheap um, uh, mechanisms in order to not have po false positives. But uh, it's clear that we have uh, important collaborations with all the molecular pathologies in our institutions in order to be able to identify these patients.